With the launch of Disney+, Plus, there was High School Musical, The Series, The Mandalorian, The World According to Jeff Goldblum, and even films like Togo and Noel. These seem to be the most serious push from Disney to get people to sign up for their new streaming service. And since that launch, they've had a few other shows and movies that have come out, but they've had little fanfare or mixed reviews. And truthfully, most adults are probably waiting for the slew of Marvel shows or Mandalorian season two to jump back into watching something on Disney+. Plus. But if I were to suggest one thing currently on Disney+, Plus that I think everybody can enjoy, it's Timmy Failure. Mistakes were made. No matter who you are, there's something to take away from this Wes Anderson-like family film, and especially when it comes to the idea of trauma and how to cope with it. I'll admit, not everything on Disney Plus is for everybody, or even for me, in the same way that not everything on Netflix or Hulu is for me. But because of this YouTube channel, I've tried to watch as much as I can on Disney Plus to see what kind of YouTube videos I could make about things. And when I saw Timmy Failure, I knew right away I needed to make a video about this film. Timmy Failure is based on a series of books from Stephen Pastis, better known as the Pearls Before Swine comic strip creator. Mistakes Were Made is the first book in the series of novels, and the movie definitely reflects that. As we get Timmy's introduction, and we see his problems without necessarily resolving them, but the film does allow the possibility for sequels or follow-up films to Mistakes Were Made. You see, his trauma isn't really completely dealt with, and let me explain. The movie opens with Timmy Failure narrating about where he's from and why he has a detective agency named Total Failure, which he believes is the best detective agency in the world. He introduces his detective partner Total, who's a giant polar bear that left the Arctic to go to Portland, Oregon. In an early scene in the film, we see Timmy's dad leave his mom and him behind, and as the camera pans over, the back door bursts open with this new polar bear friend coming in as the front door closes and his dad leaves. This symbolism shows that Total, the polar bear, isn't real. He's an imaginary friend and an escape from the realities of his father leaving him behind. It's how he copes with this idea of a broken home. And let me be clear, imaginary friends are perfectly normal. In fact, they're a good indication of an active imagination. Many children that don't have trauma have imaginary friends, and even if they're not completely imaginary, we give names and identities to possessions like toys. As a child, we use our imaginations to play when we're alone. We use our minds to create characters, and sometimes those characters just stick around. In Pixar's Inside Out, we see Riley created an imaginary friend named Bing Bong, and she wasn't going through any trauma at the time, she just wanted an imaginary friend because she was an only child. And we can assume that Christopher Robin creates personalities for Pooh Bear and all of his stuffed animal friends so that he can continue to play by himself and get closer to his toys. When imaginary friends become unhealthy is when we start to think of them as more than imaginary, using them as scapegoats for problems, or if they become a roadblock to having true, authentic, real relationships. Timmy falls into all of these categories. Timmy tells us that he started his detective agency prior to Total the Polar Bear. But we see with the polar bear by his side that he's completely immersed himself into this detective world. He's choosing to believe that the detective playtime is actually real, and that his polar bear friend is real as well. He even tells other kids that his school has a strict no bear policy. He's creating a lie to justify why Total can't be at school with him. He also believes that his detective work is so significant that he's going to have to leave school after fifth grade, not continuing on to middle school. Timmy's have the belief that he's a real detective, despite, in this film, not solving a crime at all, nor, I would assume, solving any crimes ever. And he's never made any real money being a detective. But it's this play that's completely unhealthy as he's ignoring the real world around him completely. He's using his imagination for more than play, but to avoid the trauma of his father leaving him. He's also using this made-up detective agency to stop any other major changes from happening in his life, including moving from elementary school to middle school, which is a big change. And this all lines up with something that the National Child Traumatic Effect Network has said, stating, 
Young children suffering from traumatic stress symptoms generally have difficulty regulating their behaviors and emotions. They may be clingy and fearful of new situations. Along with avoidance, he completely blames Total for some of the things that go wrong. The messes that are created or the lack of attention he gives to others is because of the polar bear. In fact, in the film, he loses one of his mother's prized possessions, a Segway, and blames it on Total because Total was supposed to watch the Segway while he went and inspected a house. It isn't his fault, it's always the polar bear's fault. And in fact, in the film, he continues to say the phrase, mistakes were made, instead of saying something like, I made a mistake, or I'm sorry I made a mistake. He seems to have a problem with taking ownership or even saying he's sorry. And at school, his counselor calls him out on his lack of accountability. It's something that Timmy doesn't even realize. And Timmy spends almost all of his time with his imaginary polar bear friend, instead of spending time with the rest of the children at school. During recess, he sits near the fence, away from the playground, to discuss detective things with Total. He also says in his narration that Rolo, one of the other kids at school, and also his neighbor, used to be his partner in crime, until Total came along and took his place. And other relationships are tarnished by his lack of facing reality as well. He completely ignores Molly Moskins, who wants to be his friend, or even more, maybe his girlfriend. And he completely refuses to acknowledge a girl named Karina, as he thinks that she's working with the evil Russians. By the way, in this film, there are no evil Russians. It's all in his imagination. His relationships with adults is not much better. Timmy's mom, Patty, has a lot of guilt for Timmy's dad leaving and for having to work multiple jobs in order to keep the two of them afloat. So she plays along with Timmy's fantasy world, discussing new offices for his detective agency, and Timmy even says that she'd be good and should work for his detective agency. And she just goes along with it and agrees. But as Timmy neglects school more, and as he starts to get into more trouble while trying to solve his crimes, his mom has to become a bit more firm with him. And Patty's new boyfriend, Crispin, seems to be the first male figure that's dated Patty since her husband left her. And because Crispin works for the police department, Timmy blames his distrust of Crispin on the fact that his detective agency doesn't work with the police, rather than admitting that he's having trouble seeing his mom dating someone new. What this film pulls off is that this movie about trauma finds hope within itself. Trauma as a story element can be so serious and overbearing. But for children, trauma isn't something they may even recognize, and they just go on feeling happy every day, not realizing that they're slowly losing the abilities to function in the real world. Timmy isn't creating an imaginary world simply to forget about his father leaving him. It started as a way to play, and it's just spiraled out of control. It's ruining his relationships, his schoolwork, and his ability to connect with other people. Mistakes Were Made isn't a movie about solving trauma, but it's a movie about recognizing it, and how he and the other people around him can begin their journey to solve it. Timmy Failure is a really fun movie, but it's also about how to cope with your own traumas or how to help someone recognize that they have trauma. It's a film filled with love and compassion, because we all have problems, and we're all in some way trying to cope with them. Thanks for watching this video. I completely appreciate uh, everybody watching the past couple of videos as we've changed a little bit of uh, the thumbnail artwork and some of the directions we're going in. I've been trying to talk maybe more social issues and psychology and, and talk a bit more serious issues. I do plan on making more history related videos, so hold tight, those are gonna be coming. We're working on things, we're making sure that uh, you guys like what we're doing. If you like this video or know any other Disney Plus content that maybe we should check out and uh, make a video about, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and as always, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff helps us out. Uh, if you want to check out our Patreon page or our t-shirt shop, links are down below for that in the description. And in the meantime, my friends, keep on moving people.